everyone, my name is Joshua Gilliland and welcome to another installment of the Legal Geeks Educational Series. I am an e-discovery attorney and blogger for Bowtie Law. Today we are focusing on a topic that's caused attorneys stress, law students confusion, and judges the occasional uh, headache, and that topic is hearsay. Hearsay is an adventure because law students spend lots of time outlining how to define hearsay, then to determine if a statement is actually non-hearsay or falls under an exception. Uh, it's a challenge, and we're going to explore some of those challenges briefly today. First, the definition, and, and we need to look at the Federal Rules of Evidence Rule 801 and 802. Effectively, hearsay is an out-of-court statement offered for the truth of the matter asserted. Under Federal Rule of Evidence 801C, we have the true definition of hearsay, and that is a statement that the declarant does not make while testifying at the current trial or hearing, and a party offers that in evidence to prove the truth of the matter asserted. Now, statement, it's very important to, to look at the definition of a statement, which means a person's oral assertion, written assertion, no, or nonverbal conduct. So again, pointing. You know, I pointed at the airplane. You know, things like that that, that would show a physical movement to, to communicate something uh, you know, could, could fall under hearsay. It's very important to not forget Federal Rule of Evidence 802. Hearsay is not admissible unless any of the following uh, provides otherwise. A federal statute, the rules of evidence, or other rules uh, from the Supreme Court of the United States. California, as in addition to the other 50 states, have their own definitions of the hearsay rule. Some mirror the federal rules exactly, and some have their own spins on them. California Evidence Code Section 1200 defines hearsay evidence as evidence of a statement that was made other than by a witness while testifying at the hearing, and that is offered to prove the truth of the matter stated. Slightly different, but it's designed to have the same intent. And as with the federal rules, except as provided by law, hearsay evidence is inadmissible. Because we want people to be in court. We want to be able to look at a record. We want the trier of fact to be able to you know, weigh the validity of the, of the individual and, and the truthfulness of the statement. And when it's from outside of a court hearing, uh, you, you lose that. So there are hearsay exceptions, and this is where the adventure begins. So what are we dealing with? One ex exception is present sense impressions, and that's under Federal Rule of Evidence Rule 8031. And that is a statement describing or explaining an event or condition. So you look at something while it's happening and a statement's made. And the days of texting and social media, in the theory, we're going to have lots of present sense impressions that will come in as tweets, as check-ins on social networking sites and other ways that people can instantaneously communicate with the entire world with what they're doing. Arguably, any of those things are present sense impressions because you are checking into the movie theater, you are checking into the concert, that's showing that a present sense impression of what you're doing. Uh, there's a very good argument to be made for, for all of those um, things that take place because you have to think of how is social media used? People are normally describing what they are actively doing. And if they're at a political rally or a concert in the park and they are live tweeting from the event, uh, frequently those would be present sense impressions. They could also be, under the right set of circumstances, an excited utterance. Uh, defined under Federal Rule of Evidence 8032, an excited utterance is a statement relating to a startling event or condition made while the declarant was under the stress of excitement that caused it. Theoretically, if somebody sees a traffic accident and they take out their smartphone and they start shooting video and people on the video who were involved in the accident are saying things like, you hit my car, I didn't mean to, all these things that could show liability of some form, or it's witnesses who are saying things like, wow, he hit 
the woman in the crosswalk, those theoretically would be excited utterances because the video would be capturing statements relating to a startling event or condition made while the declarant was under the stress of that excitement. So again, you have to think about how technology today can interface with the rules, and, and I think that's one of the prime areas where you can see excited utterances when something, you know, exciting happens, um, such as, you know, there were instances on uh, BART trains in, in California um, in where police officers were involved in altercations and smartphones came out and video was shot. So, you know, excited utterances of the witnesses uh, could, could be at issue. You could have party admissions of, of the people who were actually involved. But again, it's very important to think about the rules and how they relate to uh, digital evidence that can capture events as they are happening live. A very popular one is then existing mental, emotional, or physical condition. That's under Rule 8033. And these are statements uh, relating to a declarant's then existing state of mind. This could be very broad. This could be motive, intent, plan. It could be emotional, you know, about how somebody felt. It could be sensory or physical condition. So comparing it to an excited utterance, if you don't have the stress or excitement, it's merely describing what's going on, um, you could have a, you know, then existing, you know, physical uh, condition type, type statement. There's a subcategory of this, and it dates back to the uh, Supreme Court case from the 1870s called Hillman. And that is a statement of future intent. And you got to think, of, once again, about how people use social media. People frequently will post on a social media profile that they are going to do something. They are flying to Chicago. They are f traveling by train to New York. Um, they are going to the movies. They are meeting a specific individual. All those things are statements of future intent. They're not being offered to show that the person actually flew to Chicago, but that was their intent, which then can fall under, say, plan. So again, it's very interesting to, to look at how a very old doctrine about statements of future intent can apply to smartphones and social media today where, where people can make a statement about what they're planning to do. And we have a case going back to the 19th century that's the precedent for it being admissible. Statements against interest. A statement that can expose a declarant to civil or criminal liability could be admissible as a statement against interest. Very you know, common in criminal type cases, also perhaps some civil cases as well, you know, where people admit things over text or a Facebook status message that, that could later get them into trouble. We also have what will probably be the most common form of exception in business litigation, and that's you know, the business records rule. You know, records of a, regu a regularly conducted activity. Now you have to meet all the letter of the requirement that you know this was something that was regularly conducted. It's not that people just took notes when they want to, wanted to, but there was an actual policy in place on, on how they did things uh, that could relate to when information, say, either posted online at specific times. Um, you know, great, great arguments that could be made for how businesses, or perhaps maybe even some, you know, like you know, you know, uh, colleges and, and other institutions. Uh, regularly publish information, regularly make notes of things, regularly file reports. Um, very, very interesting to, to look at. And when you're dealing with, you know, records managers, you know, and, and authenticating and information coming in, um, I think this is an important one to, to, to not forget. There are many other hearsay exceptions as well. We have official records and writings by public employees. We have past recollection recorded. You have statements for the purpose of medical treatment. You have reputation of somebody in the community. You have dying declarations. You have co-conspirator statements, and you know there are others out there as well. You, you really have to look at, you know, you know, case law and other statutes within a state if, if there's anything else. But this is a pretty good list of of all the common ones. So with that, that concludes today's post. 
But it's, again, remember, we have rules of evidence that go back 200 years, and we have products that people use today to communicate, and frequently, you know, those are all statements. Those are assertions of information saying what they are going to do, what they did, or what they just saw. All of that would be hearsay. And there are different exceptions uh, that can be used to make those statements admissible. Thank you all, and uh, have a wonderful day.